Hey everyone. In this episode of ITS Now, we'll be providing an introduction to roadside technology. This is an overview of all the different types of technology used to uh, manage and operate the highway network. Then what we'll be doing is going on to look at uh, different technologies in more depth in future uh, episodes of ITS Now, so don't miss out on those. I'm Alastair and this is ITS Now. Technologies have been used for many years to passively monitor activity on the highway. However, over the years, additional features have been added to assist in actively managing traffic. These range from informing users about current conditions so that they can make their own decisions, such as automatically warning drivers of incidents using roadside variable message signs, through to compelling users to modify their, their driving, such as by implementing variable speed limits or by using enforcement cameras, etc. Vehicle detection is a basic building block for gathering data related to traffic. Many will be familiar with the outline of vehicle detection loops in our roads. These come in a variety of shapes and sizes depending on their use and the standards of the country being used in, but include rectangles, chevrons, circles, diamonds, even butterflies. The technology for these consists of a loop of wire slot cut into the carriageway surface, which is then sealed into place. Inductive loops work much like a handheld metal detector, but are triggered by metal objects passing over the top of them. Although very reliable, loops require complete closures to allow them to be installed and suffer from reliability issues when the carriageway surface is damaged or is in poor condition. Although this technology has had widespread use since the 1960s, it is still seen as the baseline that other technologies are measured against. To overcome some of the issues, a range of emerging technologies have been used to detect vehicles. These include in-carriageway magnetometers, which are small battery-powered wireless pucks core drilled into the center of each lane and then sealed into place. Above ground technologies include Doppler radar, thermal imaging and video analytics. As well as vehicular traffic, these technologies are routinely used for various aspects relating to pedestrian and cycle users. Some of the above ground technologies are sometimes located in the verge or gantry mounted to overcome installation and maintenance issues in the carriageway. But where this is done, there is a tendency to suffer to some extent from obscuration or environmental intrusion, resulting in a slightly less accurate method of detection compared with inductive loops. Vehicle detection is not only used to determine the presence of vehicles, such as on the approach to traffic signals, but can also be used to generate a comprehensive data set associated with traffic flow including vehicle speed, classification of vehicle type, headway between vehicles, etc. This example shows a motorway incident detection system that uses pairs of inductive loops in each lane to capture a range of data parameters and to automatically detect incidents and communicate these to the regional control center. Another issue relates to vehicle stopping in a live lane and how long it takes for this to be detected. To overcome this, ded dedicated stop vehicle detection has been deployed on smart motorway sections here in the UK. These systems currently use scanning radar to track individual vehicle movements along a motorway section and to identify abnormal vehicle behavior, such as stopping. These face a huge range of issues when attempting to achieve a high level of reliability 
particularly in high levels of traffic and within mixed vehicle use of our motorways. It is common to see CCTV used across the world to monitor traffic flow on our highway networks. These now commonly use analytic systems to detect abnormal situations, which can then be flagged to allow a human operator to interpret any interventions which may be required. In addition, enforcement systems are commonly used to automate compliance with traffic laws, including speed limits and traffic signal operation. In the UK, some of the current generation of digital systems used on motorways to enforce speed limits also have capabilities to enforce closed lanes, uh, the red X signals above individual lanes. In response to needs to more adequately protect stranded vehicles, first responders and workforce undertaking maintenance activities. Many speed enforcement systems measure the vehicle speed in a single location at the camera site, referred often as spot cameras. However, newer average speed systems are increasingly being used because they measure the time it takes a vehicle to travel between different camera sites, thus resulting in much higher driver compliance rather than speed surfing past camera locations. All these systems contribute to ensuring that information provided to drivers is accurate and should be adhered to in order to ease the flow of traffic and to maximize the safety of both the traveling public and to those who work on the highway network. Information is typically provided using variable message signs, VMS for short, which as well as text messages can now convey pictogram symbols capable of rapidly conveying information, irrespective of language or even ability to read. Advisory or mandatory dynamic speed limits provide an effective means to smooth traffic flow. The impact of flow compression on average journey times is reduced and with less stop start traffic, safety is dramatically improved. Don't forget to click on subscribe to keep up to date with ITS now. An example of an active traffic management tool is the use of ramp metering. These are traffic signals typically located on entry slips to motorways to break up the flow of vehicles entering the mainline carriageway so that flow breakdown does not occur on the motorway as a result of platoons of vehicles entering the mainline flow in close proximity. Since their original introduction in the US, these are now in use in various guises across the globe. In some locations, these are in constant use 24 seven. In others, these are only active during set hours or when congestion starts to build. The operation of the ramp metering systems typically makes use of algorithms that monitor a range of traffic parameters derived from vehicle detection on both the mainline carriageway and on the entry slips as well. All the technology installed on the highway network tends to make use of roadside cabinets of different sizes to house associated systems and electrical and communications interfaces. Within the cabinets, a wide range of base units and controllers are housed safely out of the elements. Much of the technology used on our highways has to be installed onto suitable support structures. The MS4 sign and advanced motorway indicators are shown on a fully accessible superspan gantry. This allows maintenance operations to be safely carried out from within the structure. This ensures that items can't be accidentally dropped onto passing vehicles and allows maintenance to be carried out without having to close traffic lanes. These are sizable structures equivalent to a couple of stories high compared with a house. So the design of these items is no small task for structures, civils and geotechnical disciplines. In addition, it's normal for a lot of subsurface infrastructure to be required, such as ducts and chambers to allow power and communications cables to be routed to different locations. Electrical and communication circuits are also required within structures, such as the superspan gantry we saw. 
Other supporting technologies, including emergency roadside telephones, ERTs for short, these are provided to allow drivers to contact emergency services. These continue to be provided despite the ubiquitous presence of mobile phones in most of our lives. Technologies for emergency phones range from standard telephone circuits to internet protocol and even solar powered cellular technologies. Other systems are also used to provide additional data on road use, such as count and classification data, usually for audit purposes. These include a range of technologies, including temporary systems using pneumatic tubes or camera systems to permanent systems using inductive loops. This example shows an automatic number plate recognition AMPR system used in the UK to generate average journey time information on the motorway network by identifying the time it takes for vehicles to travel from one AMPR location to the next. Other equipment often used on the roadside include metrological systems to capture weather conditions. These are often used for winter maintenance activities and to measure specific para parameters such as wind speed in exposed locations. Modern systems now have capabilities to measure carriageway temperature and identify requirements for the application of grit or for snow clearance using remote sensors. Other sensors include air quality measurements that range from large highly accurate systems that need to be housed in a dedicated container size structure down to small Internet of Things sensors, which are often single parameter battery powered devices. The output from these systems can be used with traffic management systems to alter traffic flow in response to particular environmental issues. Another area of technology progress is road tolling, where increasingly the requirement to pay in cash at tolling booths is being replaced by automatic or online payments using technologies such as AMPR or radio frequency identification tags to identify vehicles without needing to stop. Some equipment like traffic signals have become so ubiquitous that people don't give a second thought about their presence on our streets. The capabilities and technologies used with signals are far more advanced than most users realize, but is also an area of continual development. Technologies such as artificial intelligence are starting to be applied to operate these, although how these will work in urban networks of signals will have to be seen over the coming years. Newer technologies which are appearing are items such as electric vehicle charging points on street. Variants range from standalone posts and subsurface units to those integrated into street furniture, such as lighting columns. There are also a range of technologies which are used with public transport, such as real-time passenger information, RTPI. Uh, these include displays, and also bus priority capabilities of traffic signals to optimize the flow of buses uh, instead of private vehicles. Hopefully you found that interesting. Um, there are obviously more and more technologies being used with mobility, either directly on our roads or now increasingly cloud-based apps and uh, web-based um, items, etc. So the evolution of these is something which ITS infrastructure is adopting and making use of. Right, um, could I ask if you could please subscribe to our channel? It's something that really does make a difference to us and uh, will help us to bring you more episodes of ITS Now. Um, a big thank you to all of those those of you that have already done so. It's really appreciated. Um, so until then, see you next time.